Good evening, everybody. I'm Pastor Michael coming to you here on this Saturday night. Hope you had a good day today as we uh, continue in our Advent Vespers. Advent Advent is quickly coming to a close um, as uh, less than a week away now is Christmas. I hope you're looking forward to and anticipating that as much as I am. Um, But we're continuing in this uh, time of Advent this year in 2020 of looking at some familiar Christmas carols and particularly some lines from those Christmas carols and Christmas hymns. And uh, thinking about them just a little bit, because often our tendency is just to kind of breeze through them because we're worried about the notes or uh, worried about what's coming next. And we don't often, when we sing, I think, take time to think about those words that we're actually singing. Um, We don't read them in the same way. We don't think about them in the same way. So during this series, we've been doing that with some of these lines from some of these songs. And tonight's song is one we've used before, but I'll use it again tonight. It's the song, Hark the Herald Angels Sing. Um, and the line, God and sinners reconciled. Uh, the word reconciled is not a word we use probably a whole lot in everyday language, but it basically means to put right that which has been wronged. Um, uh, we think of reconciling in relationships. Uh, we think of reconciling bank, state- bank statements as something that we do sometimes, or and making sure that things line up and everything matches the way it's supposed to. Um, we, and the word reconciliation has a powerful significance when we talk about it in terms of uh, theology and scripture, uh, that God and sinners are, rec- are reconciled. Um, to, to have that, that, that implies that something is broken, something is, is, is out, of, out, of, out of alignment, out of place, and that needs to be put to rights. Um, and, and that certainly is the case. That's what sin has done. It has broken our relationship with God. It has damaged it. And now that, that damage needs to be repaired. What was bro- is broken needs to be reconciled. What was wrong needs to be made right. And that's exactly what happens at Christmas. Um, God and sinners become reconciled uh, in Jesus Christ. And so God sends his son in order to reconcile that which was broken. This is something we could not reconcile ourselves. It requires a third party, if you will. And that third party is God's own son, Jesus, come at at Christmas time. And the the Apostle Paul picks up this same idea, the same concept in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, uh, beginning at verse 18, he says this, All this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation, that God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting people's sins against them. And he has committed to us the message of reconciliation. And so we are reconciled to God through Jesus Christ. That which was wrong uh, has been made right by the grace of God through the person and the work of Jesus Christ. And so I hope that that's a comfort and a hope for you, that you have been reconciled to God. What was wrong has been made right because of Jesus. Uh, indeed, hark the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn king, God and sinners reconciled. Would you join me in prayer? Father, we do thank you that we have, in Jesus Christ, been reconciled. What was wrong has been put right. That which was um, uh, broken has now been fixed uh, because you decided to send your son as a baby boy to die and rise and ascend so that we may be reconciled to you and enjoy new life and freedom in Jesus Christ. Lord, we thank you that God and sinners have been reconciled in Jesus, in whose name we pray. Amen. And so on this Saturday night, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face toward you and give you his peace. Amen. Good night, and God bless you.